Welcome to ASF Conversations. Um, I'm Tom Molitor uh, from the University of Minnesota, professor and chair in virologist, and it's my pleasure to be able to have a conversation with uh, Professor Jose Manuel Sanchez Viscano, um, a leading expert in ASF. I'm Jose Manuel Sanchez Vizcaino. I am full professor of animal health at the University Complutense of Madrid and the director of the reference laboratory for African swine fever of the World Organization for Animal Health, OAE. And it's for me a pleasure to be here today to talk with Tom about African swine fever. Um, and I'm excited to have this, this uh, discussion uh, with one of the leading experts in the world on this particular subject. The outbreaks of ASF in recent months of China ha have really raised the awareness and the potential threat to uh, the whole global swine community. Uh, the impact on researchers, producers, uh, veterinarians uh, cannot be understated. To to set the stage for us and for the people who will be viewing this, uh, give us uh, your your insights into the actually what ASF is and the causative agent that causes this devastating disease. Well, uh, African swine fever is one not very well known in general around the world. It's a very very usually very underestimated disease. And it's one of the most complex one. It's really very complex. It's complex because the virus is large, very, very large. It's between 170 to 194 kilobase. They have more than 100 structural proteins. We don't know too much. We don't know completely the, the, the virus in itself. And these virus have also a lot of changes. They have a multifamiliar on both sides of the right and left on the DNA, so they are they change easily. Uh, we, we, and the most characteristic of this virus is that they don't induce neutralizing antibodies. I think this is a very critical point because the lack of neutralization, the lack of neutralizing antibodies create a very complex reactions between the virus and the host. And uh, there is, it's very antigenic, so they induce a lot of antibodies, but no neutralizers. So that is probably one of the most uh, difficult situations that this virus induced. The virus is mainly affecting uh, South Scrofa, so the wild, wild boar and domestic pig, and also one ticks from the Ornithodorus, Ornithodorus erraticus, and Ornithodorus nubana. So these are the hosts of the, of the virus. So the summary for me is, not well known, a little under underestimated, uh, very complex virus, and no neutralizing antibodies. Probably that could be a, a good summary to start. Uh, uh, thank you um, for that. Um, it, it reminds me that we are kindred spirits in our careers of interest of that complex interaction of the immune system and uh, a virus. How does this particular disease compare, in your experience, to the, the global swine viral problems, such as a Jeskies or a CSF or PED? How does the disease really compare, and how do we really distinguish it um, from these other important diseases? Yeah, one, one of the things that uh, make uh, an important change and in the diseases that you already mentioned, is that African swine fever have an evolution after the first outbreak in one area or one country. And usually the virus start with a very high mortality and uh, that they, they never enter in one farm in an explosive way. They usually enter with two or three animals daily, and usually not all the macro lesions are clear enough. And later, after that, three or four animals affected, usually it's a great explosion a few, a few days later. And usually at the beginning, it's very acute, 
but the evolution of the virus from the acute form, they move to even asymptomatic, asymptomatic form. So you can find a big salad of different virus isolations uh, isolated after a few years. For example, when the, when the virus enter in the Caucasians countries and the Russian federations, at the beginning was very acute what we observed. But later on, you will start to see animal that was not die. Many survivors of this animal with a very, you know, attenuated, attenuated clinical signs, even to asymptomatic too. And today we have a big variation, a big branch of different virus isolated that have different clinical form. So that is one form that make it a little more complicated African swine fever. And some of these survivor animals they keep carrying forever because they keep the virus and lymph nodes, normally and several lymph nodes, and once in a while they have intermittent viremia. So it's a very more complex virus than the ones that you already mentioned. Perhaps the more similar ones that could be in the way that there are big variability and very many different isolates, et cetera, could be PRRS, where also affecting macrophages like African swine fever, and also there are many big variations. In the case of African swine fever, you see many different variations also, many different isolates. We cannot talk about the strain because it's no neutralizing antibody. We don't have genotyping. So we work what we call genotyping, but genotyping is really not related with the virulence or with the pollution of the virus. Genotyping is just basis and one very stable protein, BP72, that is one of the most stable proteins. And the little difference of these proteins allowed us to classify the virus and genotypes. Today, we have 24 different genotypes of ASF. Uh, at this moment, at the current situations, we have infection of genotype one in the island of Sardinia and Italy, and the rest of the infected areas is genotype two. Came from the area of Africa, the east part of Africa, to the Caucasus, later to the Russian Federations, Belarus, Ukraine, European Union, and now China. Um, you mentioned, uh, we've talked a little bit about the type of virus it is. Uh, often we look at um, persistence of viruses with, uh, within animals or within the environment as a risk factor for spread, for um, 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 infection of animals within farms and between farms. Um, can you give us some insights in terms of what we know about ASF's persistence in risk within farms and between farms? Yeah, African swine fever is not uh, a very transmissible disease. So this is uh, also a big difference with the ones that you mentioned, classical swine fever or PRRS, for example. It's really not an easy virus because it's not moved by aerosol. By aerosol, it's not very effective. Uh, but, but he can go inside of many farms and between farms if you don't know well what are the mechanisms of transmissions. And one of the most important transmissions mechanism for African swine fever is blood. Blood is terribly infected. So if you have blood, if you have blood because you did, uh, you perform a necropsies and you was not taking care of the blood and, and there are some flies that are around you with the blood and later the flies go to another farm with the leg, in, in virus, you know, with the virus in the leg and put on the eyes of the, and the mucose haze or the, or the beak eat these uh, flies, you can have an infection. Blood is terribly, very important in the transmission of the disease. That's, that's the reason is because the virus is at, at, attached to the retrocytes. The virus have a very characteristic, that is the, the retrocytes are attached to the, I mean, the virus is attached to the retrocytes. That's why hemoabsorption is one of the tests that we use at the very beginning, the hemoabsorption phenomenon is one of the diagnosis tests to describe it African swine fever virus. And, and this attachment make that one single drop of, of blood have million copies of the virus. 
So that's a very effective one. And people don't, don't realize. They don't realize that if you make a necrosis and you don't really clean the blood well, later you're going to promote an explosion after the first, the first necrosis. Or that if you are in summer and you have a lot of flies, and with you, in the blood, they're going to infect other farm near you. So this is one of the mechanisms. That's also the mechanism why with meat, with fresh meat, or with meat that was not well cooked, the virus will be there as well. So uh, the virus has many, many different forms to spread, but not aerosol is the most important. So that is uh, relatively easy to control in biosafety for African swine fever. So the biosecurity in ASF is not too complicated if you compare with viruses like PRA, to the mouth, or even classical swine fever. And the, the bl blood as a factor would be the, what the evidence suggests um, in terms of the role of insects is all tied to the blood component as well. Is that correct? No, that's it. You know, the, the, there are two types of insects. One insect that is a vector where the virus is replicating as well. That's why vehicles that are not well cleaned or disinfected, boots, you know, persons that go and move around, necrosis to perform a necrosis or open a, an animal, all these factors are very, very dangerous. Let's um, uh, talk a little bit about the current outbreak in China and uh, have. Have you give us some of your in insights in terms of the history of ASF, including China, and how the virus may or may not have changed um, throughout the history? How the virus reached Asia. In 2014, we published one uh, paper in which we mentioned that it, China has two important sources of the potential virus introduction to China. One was from Africa, because there are many business between China and Africa, and most of these African countries, countries that are affected of African swine fever. And there was 60,000 uh, people, worker, Chinese worker, moving from Africa to China, going back by boat, with some time, with meat, and you, you know, all these products. The second source was that they was in, uh, importing pig from Russia, from Russian Federation. So these two entrants was really very risky to, to the Chinese uh, production. And finally, the virus entered. And the pattern of the virus that uh, is already in China have the same epidemiological and molecular pattern that the Russians want. So look like the virus came from Russia to China. Understanding that there are some additional outbreaks in Europe, at various places in Europe going on right now, can you give us some thoughts about kind of the global distribution of ASF at this point in time? I, try, I will try to summarize for you. In the European Union, the biggest problems that we have is the wild boar infection. So in most of our country, with exception of Romania, in these places, all what you see, mainly all the outbreaks are wild boar outbreak. Uh, in Russia and Romania, Belarus and Ukraine, we have more or less 50-50, 50% domestic, 50% wild boar, or sometimes more domestic. Like in the case of Romania, we have a lot of more domestic than wild boar. So that's different scenarios. Do you have any thoughts of, of um, what sorts of risks there are for naive populations like in US and Canada that have large swine populations, the risk of this, and how has the outbreaks in China and increased outbreaks in Eastern Europe uh, affected that risk? Well, I think that as much African swine, swine fever is present in important countries. The risk is bigger for all of us. Mm -hmm. So uh, in the particular case of the United States, uh, where you have quite a lot of uh, materials and movements between China and United States, I think that at this moment, the risk for your countries increased uh, 
a lot in comparison with only the European Union infection. So I think you are now a little, you should be a little more concerned about the African swine fever at this moment. Yeah, we learned from PED um, the, the risks from feed and feed ingredients, and, and um, I would think that that would be amplified with um, now ASF as another potential. The people are expecting that the first infection of African swine fever in a farm is going to be explosive with hundreds of mortality, not, not like that. Usually they enter with not big amount of virus, so we have very few cases that sometimes will be not very clear from the pathological point of view. And later of that, after three or four days of these four cases, that will be a big explosion. So when you when you're thinking that the explosions is the outbreak, no. Usually you have to go back four, five, six days back. So it's very important to training the people at this moment in free countries or yours about how African swine fever really is. Because the history of African swine fever, as I mentioned at the beginning, is not well clear. The people confused a lot with classical swine fever. And it's not the same. It's not the same. So even that, even that they have some uh, pathological or necro lesions very similar, the, the way how the behavior of one virus and the other is not similar. So, and the entrance, the way of entrance is different as well. So African swine fever need to, to need a little of the attention from the veterinarians and farmers. Does protective immunity exist? Can you immunize a pig and protect it from um, ASF? First of all, I would like to give you a good news. A good news about that, we, our laboratory, our laboratory have already the first oral vaccine for wild boar in African swine fever. So we have already, we has been already make the patent, this vaccine and our publications is going to be stored in the, in the, in the open, in the open scientific book. Do you have any, I think we're going to wrap this up. Um, do you have any final comments other than what um, I prodded you with, or, or um, you've been wonderful in, um, in, in that, but do you have any other comments you want to say? Only we have to be careful. Three things. One is to, to be prepared, to be aware. Secondly, to look, uh, to avoid the possibility of being infected in the wildlife. That's going to be more complicated. But that is the only things that we have to be a little worried about. And the second things that I would like it to say is that it has been a great pleasure for me, Tom, to talk with you today and to talk to all our, for all our colleagues in the States and our farmers and friends. And I want to send it my best regard to all of you. Well, uh, my thanks uh, to you. And um, I, I will toast you in person when you next uh we next have the opportunity to be in face-to-face -face interaction so um thank you so much for your your insightful comments thank you thank you Tom. thank you as i told you asf is more walking with touches so we can reach don't forget me, Tom. No, no. You're a good model in many ways. <laughs>